Assalamu alaikum everyone. So we are here with the part four of the training and development. Sorry, I have to cut my last video in half since it took too much time to explain me lots of things. So we are here with the part four. We shall be starting where we left our previous part. So proceed. So we were discussing about the internal trainings. What are the various different types of trainings? And I have discussed everything with you people in detail, but now I actually discussed all of them on one single slide. Now I will be discussing all of them one by one on different slides. So what is internal type of trainings? These are basic, it can be informal, it can be formal. So there are two types of internal trainings. Most of the time informal trainings are the way, the way we actually interact with our seniors and juniors and colleagues with our peers and we learn from each other <laughs> okay this training actually occurs with a feedback or sometimes when we see our one of our colleagues doing something or you might have seen your colleagues using microsoft excel and using the keyboard with the key shortcut keys you must have this curiosity how this person is doing such a thing and most of you actually ask those students, hey, what is the, what was that shortcut key? I want to learn more about shortcut keys. So this type of learning is basically referred as informal training. When you have this feedback, when you get the help from the colleagues, you actually learn. So this type of learning is an ongoing process and it is always in transition. You always learn, but all you need to have such a culture of sharing where you don't have any communication gap. You don't feel hesitant or ashamed of asking questions. You don't feel embarrassment if you know nothing or you don't know anything about in a specific area and you ask question, there is nobody to actually bully you. So if you have such a culture, this type of culture or this type of an organization is bound to be successful. Moving forward, Okay, we discussed about on the job training, what type is this type of training is. What happens here, we actually assign a trainee or a new engineer or a new employee with a senior employee. And when he actually performs a job, a senior one actually guides him or instructs him to do this thing in such a way, not in that way, because this might cause certain problem so in order to avoid such problem a senior is always there to guide junior one so problems there are certain problems that are affiliated with this type of training and what kind of problems are these say for instance if management has assigned me a training and i myself is a poorly qualified indifferent trainer i myself don't know about many things when someone is attached with me what will i teach to that student you can imagine it what can a poorly qualified a poor trainer will train another employee obviously i don't know my work same issue will be with the other person he might be he might not be able to learn anything from me at all neither i will be telling him anything Okay, another problem is this, say for instance, that Sam, I am qualified, I'm an expert in my area and I have been given so many tasks and assignments by the senior management and when I have been assigned another trainee to train, certainly this person is going to disrupt me, my regular work. He would be questioning me again and again, asking me and again and again, he would be disturbing me in doing my work. So this is, is another problem affiliated with on the job training. Another thing is, say for instance, I am a tricky person. I am a shrewd, astute person who knows a lot of weak areas or loopholes in the company policies. Therefore, what I can do, I can tell this trainee those bad or incorrect habits. I can tell him those loopholes. Since he was new, he might adopt those weak, those incorrect habits, those incorrect methods of doing a work. 
because youngsters are always curious to find out shortcuts to do a hard job in an easier way. Moving forward, how you can go for, what are the various stages of on the job training, how you can go for on the job training. So there are four stages that every employee has to follow. The very first stage is prepare the trainees. The trainees who are coming for on the job training, you need to prepare them, their mindset, put them at ease. Very first thing is to make them comfortable. Ask them, don't worry, you people are here to learn. Certainly you people are new, you people are going to make mistakes, therefore you don't need to be worried about it all. We are here to help you. Put them at ease. Find out what they know. Try to inquire them, interrogate with them, question with them. Try to find out what they know already, how you can polish them more, get them interested. Give them such kind of tasks, such kinds of assignments or projects which actually interest them. Put some little bit of incentive into it. Always go for the immediate confirmation. Always go for appreciation. Appreciate. A youngster always demands, or a new or junior colleague always demands what appreciation and recognition. The reward is always there. The second stage is the present information. Now you are the boss, you are the in charge of those trainees. Your job is to tell, show and question. Tell them, demonstrate them, show them how you actually doing it and then question them. Ask questions and answer their questions. Present one point at a time. Your job is to present one point, just confirm that whether the person has learned it or not. Make sure the trainees know. Your job is to make sure they have learned it. The third stage is to provide the trainees with the practice. Have them same thing, some projects, some assignments so that they can polish their, polish their skills. Have the trainees perform the task. Give them certain incentive with it. Ask questions, observe and correct. See if they are making any mistake. Your job is to correct them. Remember, your job is never to scold them, never to insult them. Please pardon me. I'm having a call. I would uh, be... Okay, so we were discussing about ask questions, observe and correct. Evaluate the mastery, how much mastery they have developed on a specific task. The fourth and final stage is do follow up. Keep on asking the students if they have any kind of problem. Put the trainees on their own check. Ask them, give them authority, empower them so that they can have this independence feeling, feeling of independence. They should have this authority, the feeling of autonomy. Check them frequently. Remember, empowering is always followed by a check. The responsive power, the absolute power comes with absolute responsibility, but you need to follow that risk. Your job is to make them accountable. Reduce follow-up as these employees learn, as they become master and as they improve their performance. And gradually and slowly, they become master one day. And one day will be there when they will be having their own trainees. They will be developing their own trainer, trainees. They will follow the same stages, same steps that today you have followed. Tomorrow they will follow on their own students, on their own trainees. Internal training continues. So cross training as I have been giving you example of the job rotation. So is training people do more than one job. They have to perform different types of job in the same department, not in different department. Remember that. Okay, sometimes it might be used for the lower level employees, especially when it comes to the labor. So we actually involve the same employee in different types of activities. An electrician can work as a carpenter sometimes, sometimes, not most of the time. 
depending upon the nature of job increases flexibility in development challenges for cross training there are certain challenges or certain problems that are affected with the cross training okay as i was telling you that it is not favored by employees because employees sometimes they are given additional duties say for instance if i am an employee and i am going on my leave for one week so another person may be assigned my work in my my work to another person or i might be assigned the work of another person for one week that means i am not compensated for that additional duty or additional work that i do besides my own so employees not they are not in favor for cross trainings they are not interested in developing skills or capabilities in any other area except for their own threatens union with loss of jurisdiction and broadening of jobs okay the unions don't have footing over here because when it comes to the job description we don't have any specific job description because employees are expert their job scope is so much broadening there is no jurisdiction for one employee that he can do this and he, this person he, he or she cannot do this work therefore it's a challenge for union and threatens the unions requires different scheduling during training so you need to have different schedules also so today if i am working in the morning i might be working at night tomorrow depending what kind of organization i am working for causes loss of productivity as people know so productivity if you are always in process you are always in transition so when will you develop your mastery on a specific area you are always in learning process and you are always making mistakes so the mastery is not there coming back coming to the next point that is our uh, external types external training or external mode and mode of training reasons for external why we use external method of training is it is less expensive to outsourcing training okay external training what happens in external training is we actually hire someone from outside and sometimes what happen we send one or two employees for the training to outside whereas in outsourcing we bring someone an specialist an expert to our organization we ask him to train our employees as per our policies as per our strategies therefore it's less expensive insufficient time to develop training okay the some one if i am sending a person to outside the training is for one day and the trainer has to actually give attention to each and every person since each and every one of them has paid for it so say for instance if i am a person and i have this habit of asking asking questions again and again more questions so the trainer would remain busy only answering my questions what about the other participants who are also coming from different companies and they have their own questions to be answered so when will the trainer will train me in my specific areas so insufficient time to develop training okay so another reason is this if my company has insufficient time my training department is always occupied my hr department is always occupied with different types of duties and responsibilities and my employees are always busy therefore we don't have time for developing training our training capabilities are training trainers and are developing trainers another reason for external training is the lack of expertise we don't have intellectual capital available in the company so we are compelled to go for external method of training mode of training advantage of interacting with outside another important reason is that you actually interact with outsiders you develop your you, you find out different contexts as well outsourcing of the training okay ji outsourcing what comes in outsourcing of a training is cost and greater emphasis on internal linking of training to organizational strategies and other issues 
when you bring an external trainer to inside, you actually outsource a person from outside. This person comes and this person will specifically be training a specific person in a specific area and they will be trained. There are no outsiders, there are no any other person related to related that they may disturb their learning. Therefore, cost is much greater. Cost is also involved, but at the same time, you train actually your employees as per your strategies, as per other issues that are when you have this issue of secrecy, you don't want your important tasks to be discussed outside. So, or we actually outsource training when an outsourcing vendor or consultancy or a firm is very much famous and popular in a specific area and the trainer is very much popular, therefore you actually engage them. For instance, the School of Leadership is there, the TRG, the Training Resource Group is always there. OKG, the nutshell, the company that I actually showed you on that when we had this physical interaction in our class, I was showing you different, different consultancies. So there are, okay, Narejo Consultants is also there. Is another example, okay, the Lahore, Lums, EDC, REDC is also there. They are popular, popular vendors who actually give different types of training. They actually outsource different types of trainings also. You recently have witnessed that we brought an expert, Mr. Dr. Arif Rana. He was an expert in case study method of teaching. The person came here and trained our faculty how to teach in case study method of teaching. This is how we outsource the training. Government supports training projects. So you have seen this prime minister support program. Okay, you have seen income support program. You have seen different youth development projects they all of them are sponsored by the government therefore these actually trainings are supported are sponsored by the government educational assistance programs are always there to help so organization actually have this leverage of using the external outsourcing the trainings that is why we actually use external training okay combine combination training methods what happens in these trainings is we actually combine different approaches and develop a single training whereby you will have school to work transition. You have to spend half day studying or training yourself and half day you would be working. Okay, we have this example recently. We have been sent to State Bank of Pakistan whereby we were supposed to give them a training from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m that makes four hours of training and the rest of the time was given to them to work and do their office job as they as usual so this is how they actually have this combination of training approach they actually train their employees at the same time they are working as well apprenticeship okay apprentices we have generally these six months uh, training programs whereby different employees come from different schools. Maybe they might be coming from different universities and come and train here. Internships, generally we have internships for engineers. We have for MBA and BBA students. These people come or go to different corporate sectors and develop their skills and abilities. They, mm, get the know-how, how the things actually work in organizations, what they have studied in their books, does it really exist? Does it really happen into the real world or not? Or whatever they have studied are only for the books, not in the real world. So they get to know about all of the, all these things. Okay, most common apprenticeships are, okay, when it comes to the apprenticeship, remember, such kind of trainings are always for the lower labor class. Labor class apprenticeship are the people who are having certain diplomas in electrical engineering. So these people actually need some training. Therefore, different companies, especially when it comes to the production facilities and manufacturing facilities. In your case, here in Sakhar, we have this company, Angro, our Fuji fertilizers. These companies offer apprenticeship offers this program of apprenticeship 
for different different types of professions electrical engineering mechanical engineering and all these things so they actually develop these trainees are apprentices for at least 3 years and when they become professional they are developed completely as an engineer they are some of them might be getting an opportunity to work with the company and continue for a longer period of time they might be hired on a contractual basis or they might be given a permanent regular job and some of them will get a certificate from the angro or for the fertilizer company whatever the company is and will go and apply somewhere else and if they and certainly they will get an opportunity somewhere else so these are different most common types of this program you can have this type of training in elect electricians or construction side they have this training carpenters plumbers pipe fitters sheet metal workers okay depends what kind of organization you are actually applying for apprenticeship okay structural steel workers there are certain organizations where the steel works are used elevator constructors roof toppers sprinklers you have seen different sprinklers in the gardens that are actually shower showers are used brick layers so there are many things that are actually used okay please excuse me i am having a call sorry so coming towards e learning so you have experienced about the electronic methods of teaching since we are using this zoom zoom sessions and we have been recording various different types of lectures and uploading on youtube we have been using lms learning management system we have been using L erp systems and campus management systems so we have been using the different types of softwares as well so all these softwares and all these electronic method of learning or online trainings or online methods are used in corporate as well and these methods were used a long time ago before covid as well so covid has only brought us more closer towards electronic method of learning and teaching and training so corporates are in fact now utilizing these approaches and educational institutions and universities are also utilizing online learning procedures so e learning what do you understand by use of internet or an algorithm in internet to conduct training online so here you have different e learning methods mostly these are used in organizations since the book that i am actually discussing or teaching or making videos on which the book it has the edition of 2016 the book was published in 2016 and before 2020 there was 2019 there was no covid therefore all these methods were used earlier as well but these methods were only limited to the organizations organizations were using these methods but now these are being used everywhere in every organ in every walk of corner so let's see what are the various different methods of e learning so distance learning you are actually sitting in a distant remote areas all you need to have is internet link and laptop so that you can be connected with the internet and have this classroom environment there you need to have electricity you need to have internet and you need to have laptop if you have all these three things you can have online learning or electronic learning everywhere in every corner of the world okay simulations and training generally we have found many simulations for trading purposes you also have worked for online trading you have also experienced bloomberg how to utilize bloomberg how to make tradings you have been buying and selling stocks as well in your financial lab so financial labs also provides the same type of environment that is a simulated environment and electronic learning actually happens there blended learning whereby you actually engage your classroom environment your simulations and distance learning and all these methods are combined in one form and in one training you will have a linkage from a person or from a person sitting in us 
who might be a trainer or maybe a participant and he will contact or he will be connected with you through a zoom link or internet link using a different software whatever it may be okay you have to develop e-learning criteria what are why you are adopting e-learning is there any necessary thing that you need to have before going for e-learning the very first thing that is important is you need to have stock management support and funding because you need resources to have e-learning you need people to develop resources you need people who can record these lectures and upload on your company portal and you need to have a software which will help company employees to access these videos and make a self-paced or self-guided portal training portal accepting that training is being decentralized and individualized so it's not necessary anymore that every person will sit at one single time everybody should be present in the classroom no it's not necessary anymore i have i am recording this lecture i will upload it for you on the youtube and you can access this video at any time whenever you are free therefore it's it's decentralized and it's individualized so it depends upon the person to person when he or she is free he or she will access these videos and learn current training methods are not meeting the training needs okay the another criteria is that if the current method is not meeting the criteria of needs say for instance if i am not getting time to learn so when will i have time when will I learn myself? So online methods are very much easy. Say for instance, if I am sitting here in Sakhar in a remote area, how can I access various different scholars who are working from MIT or from Oxford or from Cambridge or any other famous university? How can I access those brain, those think tanks to train me? Or so we have this online learning method so we can have different experts who can train us trainees are computer literate say for instance if i am a trainee i all i need to have that i should learn how to access the internet how to use laptop or computer how to use software that is linking me with different resources travel time and cost and geographical dispersions of the trainees say for instance our company or we people are sitting in different corners of our country so we cannot we don't have travel time and it's costs it's very much the company cannot bear that cost therefore we can easily have this internet link we which can actually merge them at one time at one place we can come here and talk and we see each other face to face Trainees are self-motivated and can direct their own learning. So trainees can learn by themselves. They are self-motivated. They are there to learn. So obviously, if someone is listening my this part of the lecture and listening my these words, he is self-motivated because he has been listening to me for last half an hour because I have been recording this video for at least 30 minutes, for at least 30 minutes. Okay, coming to the last part of our lecture, that is to evaluate whether we are making benefit from trainings or not. You have to identify the cost benefit analysis. You have to conduct the cost benefit analysis. You have to make sure whether the money that has been spent on the trainees, on your employee, the company that is investing on the company, on the trainings, is it making any benefit or is it bringing any benefit? Is it bringing any efficiency or productivity? Is it increasing productivity or is it improving performance of our employees or not? You have to compare the cost and the performance betterment. If there is improvement in employee's performance as compared to his previous performance, that means the cost, the money is well spent. If there is no improvement, 
then there is still room that we can work on this employee. But if there is no improvement at all, rather he has deteriorated in his performance, then there is something wrong. There is something fishy fishy going on. Try to find out what's the problem. Measurement of both cost and benefits may be difficult. Yes, it is. Sometimes it is difficult. So you have to identify the return on investment in terms of analysis. You can use benchmarking. You can benchmark employees with each other. You can benchmark a company's department with another department. So there are various different methods, but cost benefit analysis has always been very much useful when it comes to the training and development evaluation. So calculating training, cost and benefits. For cost and benefit analysis, you need to determine overall training cost. How much cost does this training actually is? Identify the potential saving areas. If you are going to invest 30 lakh rupees on a specific training, what type of savings we are going to have? Compute, try, you have, initially you have identified the saving areas, then try to compute those potential savings. How much you did you save? Conduct cost and saving benefits then. You will have a clear cut response. Now, what are the areas? What are the typical costs? And what, are, what can be the typical benefits? And then you will be comparing the cost with the benefits. So here are, are the final slide of our today's lecture. So typical cost, the trainer's salary and time. If the trainer is our, our own employee, then his salary and the opportunity cost since he has left his own job and came here for the training. So it is, there is always, there is a opportunity cost. So trainees, salary and time. The trainees are also here. They have left their work. Therefore their work is lagging there, is placed there and these trainees are here to learn something. So time and opportunity cost, both are these opportunity cost. Material for training. The things that you have developed and the manuals that you are utilizing, the resources that you have actually undertaken for this training, it has its own cost. Expenses for trainers and trainees. If you have made some arrangements, if you have arranged their meals, if they have, if you have arranged their teas and refreshments and all these things, it has their cost. Cost for facility and equipments, infrastructure that you are using. The classroom environment, the lighting, electricity, the utilities are being utilized here. The resources are being utilized here. Everything has its own cost. And the last but not the least, the lost productivity. Everybody is sitting over here. HR departments, two or three people are also sitting over here. The trainees are sitting over here. The trainer himself is sitting over here. And all of them are only learning here. They are not working. They are not working at the moment. Therefore, everything has its own cost and all of these referred as opportunity cost. What would be the typical benefits when you compare it with the cost? You will see whether there is any increase in productivity, whether there is any reduction in error in accidents. The people have avoided, people have avoided now are not making any mistakes, are not, there is a reduction in the number of accidents on the production floor, reduction in employee turnover, the people are not leaving our organizations anymore. Less supervision is necessary, the people are self-driven, self-motivated, they believe in self-efficacy now. They are doing their work without any supervision. There are no any costly mistakes being made the ability to use their, motive, their capabilities. They know how to utilize, how to bring new ideas, how to bring the change. Attitude changes towards different trends and benefits. So cost benefit is necessary, is always necessary. So with this, Okay, the one last slide.
so we were discussing about internal evaluation methods yes we were discussing about pre and post measurements you have been evaluating the employees or trainees you conducted a pre test pre training test you can also go for the post training test as well there can be pre and post measures as well so you have to ensure what kind of organization do you people are actually working and you can find out the solution you can find out an evaluation method for a specific area say for instance if i am a teacher here we are a university teacher so university mechanism is to see whether the teachers are doing their job most importantly perfectly or not we have various different methods to find out whether the teachers have changed their method of teaching or not after training or not and if you are there to learn you will certainly find out the difference in yourself as well in your teaching method will change eventually the students will find will observe a visible not visible change would be noticed by the students in you and with this thank you very much guys our first chapter our first online chapter ends here we shall be meeting in our next class that is on performance management till then allah fez fiam onla take good care of yourself and we shall be meeting very soon thank you very much stay tuned stay blessed